This Week at NASA. I think what a lot of us are wondering about is making sure that everything's up and running again. Shannon and Doug uh, removed the last uh, jumpers today and put the racks back, and so it's all spick and span, and uh, it's uh, back to business as usual, it seems. The International Space Station's cooling system was reactivated and finally back in normal operation. The pump is looking good. Oh, sweet. Well, we got our station back. Three spacewalks by Expedition 24 flight engineers Doug Wheelock and Tracy Caldwell Dyson were needed to remove and replace a failed ammonia pump that had disabled one of the station's two cooling loops on July 31st. Oh, pull it. Okay. Oh, there you can see us. Yep, I see. The final EVA, a seven hour, 20 minute outing, completed the complex task. Flight controllers at the Johnson Space Center then spent the next three days reconnecting various onboard units from their system-saving workarounds to the newly restored cooling loop. The whole team is in a great mood and everybody is looking forward to some well-deserved rest after the uh, effort of the last couple of weeks. The agency held its first Information Technology Summit, bringing together government and industry leaders from across the nation to discuss and showcase the best in private and public IT innovations. More than a thousand people participated in the event held outside Washington. Presentations ran the gamut from social networking and green IT to security and privacy. Uh, the president wants all of us, and, and, and I will say all of you, uh, to come up with better ways to move the government forward on IT. The IT role in NASA's success with exploration Using systems and applications that control space missions is obvious. But if we dig deeper, we see how extensive the IT support really is. Administrator Charles Bolden led a list of speakers that included U.S. Chief Information Officer Vivek Kundra and IT executives from Disney and Google. Researchers at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center have recently completed the second and final phase of flight tests on the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. The performance and structural integrity of this airborne observatory, also known as SOFIA, was validated through a series of flight tests that confirmed the aircraft could operate safely at various flight conditions with the telescope's door open. Clear for Pupo 1.5 to 0.5. Three, two, one. SOFIA technicians at the Dryden Aircraft Operations Facility in Palmdale, California, will now finish installation and checkout of the remaining systems that support telescope operations. The modified Boeing 747 is now approved to begin flying astronomy missions at altitudes as high as 45,000 feet later this year. Outstanding educators from across the country learned a thing or two about space and its technologies during the Marshall Space Flight Center's International Space Camp. Each state's 2010 Teacher of the Year participated in a week-long series of events, including training on space station and shuttle simulators, and lectures and lab sessions about space history and rocket technology. They also learned innovative hands-on techniques for teaching students about America's space program. One of the great things about the experience is that we are learners too. And um, as teachers, first and foremost, we have to be learners. We are the lead learners in our classroom. And so this opportunity of, of learning and collaborating and sharing um, and experiencing so many of the wonders of space um, can't help but motivate us to take that back into our classrooms. Teacher of the Year is the nation's oldest and most prestigious honor bestowed upon educators. <laughs> Students, their parents, teachers, grandparents, and others spent two fun-filled days enjoying the wonders and mysteries of space during NASA Exploration Day, a joint venture between the Langley Research Center and Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia. You get to go to work every day and you get to do things that are sort of like working puzzles and working with computers and doing experiments and all kinds of fun things. And so that's a great career. Activities included a talk from former astronaut Roger Crouch and the Exploration Experience, an interactive trailer exhibit which uses 3D imagery, audio effects, and the latest video technology 
to recreate the challenges of spaceflight. Guests also had the opportunity to check out Mars and points beyond, learn how future explorers might live and work beyond Earth's orbit, and touch a real moon rock. 45 years ago, on August 21, 1965, astronauts Gordon Cooper and Pete Conrad launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida on the Gemini 5 mission. Lift off, we're off on the hour. The third manned Gemini flight. The eight-day mission evaluated the guidance and navigation system needed to rendezvous in space and the effects on astronauts of prolonged exposure to zero gravity. With this flight, the United States took the manned spaceflight endurance record from the Soviet Union while demonstrating crew survivability over the length of time required for a lunar mission. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.